Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic, and today we're discussing something called impeachment, which is a process common to a lot of democratic countries. So we're going to discuss what this means in several countries and the sort of implications that impeachment might have. In general, impeachment is when an elected official commits some sort of misconduct and another body of officials votes, usually requiring what's called a supermajority, a high percentage, since it's overruling the will of the people who elected this person. Impeachment doesn't always mean removal of office, but we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to start with the United States as an example. The US has two large bodies of elected officials, the House of Representatives and the Senate. The House of Representatives has the ability to vote on someone's impeachment. This could be a federal judge, a senator, all sorts of positions, up to the President of the United States. The House has voted to successfully impeach someone 21 times, including Presidents Andrew Johnson, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump twice. Now, once the House votes on that motion, the actual consequences go to the Senate, who vote on removing that person from office. Out of those 21 impeachments, only eight have been voted to be removed from office, and all of those eight were federal judges. The other cases, including all of the presidential cases, were acquitted by the Senate, so they remained in office. There was an impeachment initiated against former President Richard Nixon, but he resigned from office to avoid being removed from office. On a state level, the state's legislature has the ability to vote on the impeachment of state governors, which is a much more common occurrence. The first presidential impeachment was issued against Andrew Johnson in 1868 for removing a Secretary of War, and some believed it was motivated by the Secretary's political leanings. The House impeached him, but the Senate missed the two-thirds vote by one vote to actually remove him from office. The second presidential impeachment was initiated against Richard Nixon for his cover-up of a 1972 break-in to the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee, but again he resigned before the voting. In 1998, former President Bill Clinton was impeached for lying under oath and the obstruction of justice in the sexual assault and harassment lawsuit revolving around White House intern Monica Lewinsky. The first of two impeachments of Donald Trump revolved around his asking foreign powers to meddle in the 2020 election, specifically when Trump asked the Ukrainian president to investigate Joe Biden. The second impeachment occurred surrounding Trump's involvement in an incitement of insurrection as rioters stormed the United States Capitol at the behest of the former president. In the Philippines, they have a structure similar to how the United States functions, with a House and a Senate one who votes on the impeachment and one who passes the criminal consequences. There's only been one high profile removal from office, the former Chief Justice Renato Corona, who was removed for failing to disclose that he had millions of dollars of assets and that this was a betrayal of public trust. The process can be quite different in other parts of the world. In the United Kingdom, the last impeachment trial ended in 1806. Now, someone is tried for their criminal misconduct by the Houses of Parliament, essentially skipping the impeachment process common in the United States and moving straight to the removal and consequences. In most Latin American countries, the phrase impeachment is synonymous with removal from office. In Brazil, for example, a former president, Dilma Rousseff, was impeached and removed in 2016 for financial mismanagement. In Peru, former president Martin Vizcarra was recently removed from office for what they called moral incapacity, for alleged corruption and accepting bribes during his time as a governor, before becoming president. This impeachment was divisive for the country, sparking a series of demonstrations rejecting the person replacing him. Now, at the beginning of this video, I specified that impeachment is a feature in democratic governments that allow the voice of the people to dictate who rules. So that's why you won't see any impeachments in dictatorships or monarchies. There's also countries that don't do impeachments, but instead focus their energies on votes of no confidence, where a higher majority of peers can vote to remove someone that their peers have no faith in. These sorts of votes are likely gray areas, not black and white like criminal proceedings, but they do indeed happen all around the world. So I know this was brief and superficial, but hopefully it gave you an interesting look at the concept of impeachment and how it might play out. Thanks for watching.